All right, so let's uh, talk about uh, UML class diagrams, uh, just to make sure that we're all in the we're all talking the same the same language. Uh, so I, as I mentioned uh, last week, uh, we we talked about class diagrams uh, as being a very conceptual way of talking on how the data is structured, right? and uh, they're meant to um, to uh, go across uh, languages, across frameworks, uh, and give us a, a, a common language to talk about. How, how data is structured, regardless on whether it's going to be implemented as a relational database, or it's going to be represented as an object-oriented data model, uh, or as a JSON uh, um, uh, object notation, uh, or whether we're using XML. Uh, regardless on how we're actually going to implement the, the data structure, uh, uh, UML allows, you know, goes, can go across uh, whatever framework, whatever um, infrastructure that you, uh, you intend to use. All right, that's the intention. So it's very conceptual. Uh, and, uh, and then mapping those concepts, uh, implementing them in the actual framework or language or whatever you, you, you choose to, to, to concretely implement this, uh, oftentimes is, uh, there's no one-to-one -one mapping from this conceptual uh, thinking about data structures and how it's actually going to be implemented either in a relational database or object, object orientation. Uh, so so uh, class diagrams are, are much more uh, powerful are, are much more uh, verbose. There, 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 there are many concepts in uh, in UML that are not don't, don't uh, have no equivalent in uh, in relational databases or or object oriented technology or, or some other languages or some uh, frameworks. Yes. Uh, so today we'll talk a couple of the, a couple of them. Uh, for instance, um, inheritance is a very uh, is, is a very basic concept in uh, in UML in class in class diagrams. But there is no equivalent in relational databases, right? There is no, uh, there's no native way of implementing uh, inheritance in a relational database. Nevertheless, we have to find ways of representing it, right? Uh, for instance, there's, there's, a, there's a three, three strategies that are very common in industry on how is it that you uh, map or implement uh, uh, inheritance uh, using relational databases, each one with, with pros and cons. It, since you know they don't exactly implement uh, inheritance, but nevertheless they uh, they uh, they can impose certain constraints that you would expect in a, in a, in a, in inheritance, right? Very much like uh, JavaScript, for instance, does not does not implement a lot of the uh, notions on uh, object orientation, such as implementing interfaces or inheritance or uh, so. So not everything maps to everything. Yes, uh, but nevertheless we have to find you know, what is the best way to implement. Something in a in a in a, in a separate uh, in a separate way. Uh, so let's let's talk about uh, UML in general, and uh, and then uh, perhaps a little later we'll we'll talk about how each one of these is implemented in in a, in a relational database. Uh, so so again, um, it's a it's a it's a high level uh, implementation that allows us to talk about um, designing the structure of of databases at a very high level. That can then be translated into a lower level language such as SQL or or, or relational um, or um, ER model or um, uh, object oriented uh, object oriented model uh, to, a, to a particular language uh, and uh, and typically these there's, there are tools that allow you to automatically map between these worlds right that uh, you can draw your UML class diagram press a button uh, and it can generate for you. Uh, either C Sharp or Java or, or SQL uh, um, tables, and, and can even do reverse engineering. Right? You, can, you can point it uh, to an existing uh, relational model, right? and it will generate from that the, um, the equivalent class diagram. Right? So, so, it, so it, it can go both ways. Right? There are tools, some, some expensive tools that can uh, do you know, a, a round robin design and, and reverse engineering, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you can you can go from from SQL to to UML, then from UML you can go to Java, and you ha you can have a nice mapping between the between the between the, the two two three or four different worlds. Uh, so yeah, so UML allows us to to represent uh, all sorts of data structures. Um, so a class uh, typically will will um, you know uh, uh, will represent the uh, the structure of a of a particular concept um, or an, an idea. Um, uh, typically, of something that is meant uh, for to, to capture uh, data for, right? Uh, so you'll 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 capture employees or 
or, or courses, uh, courses or modules or, uh, and how they're related to one another. And, uh, and then describes the different attributes that, uh, that capture the, the, a data point uh, that represents an instance of, of one of these objects. Um, uh, oftentimes, you'll hear me uh, refer to the structure of, instead of a class as, as the schema. Right? And, uh, you know, very, but oftentimes, the schema is uh, uh, we typically refer to uh, when, we're, when we're just talking about a relational, re relational schema, how it's structured in, a, uh, in, in SQL. But these terms are interchangeable, right? Because they, you can talk about the schema in a Java uh, model, right? A, a representing a class diagram in Java, or or Java or a class in C sharp, or 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 the or the structure of a of a table, or the structure in a UML class diagram, right? So you all often uh, hear me uh, say uh, uh, use the uh, concept of, of the schema in different concept in different in different contexts. Right? But always meaning that is the uh, description of the structure of, of data. Uh, as we saw la last week, uh, class diagrams are typically represented uh, as uh, rectangles uh, with the name of the class at the top. And then you have a middle um, portion here that describes the uh, different attributes that describe uh, that class. Uh, these, uh, these attributes can be further described with the, uh, the, the data type that um, captures, uh, that, that, repre that represents the, uh, the, that particular property that could be a string, an integer, a float, whatnot. Um, and uh, additionally, uh, we have accessors that uh, describe the accessibility of each one of these, one, each one of these properties, where minus uh, represents the, uh, uh, being private, meaning no one has access uh, outside of the class to any of these properties. Uh, plus, meaning it's public, that from outside you have access to those, uh, those, those properties. You have a, uh, pound that it's uh, protected, meaning only only uh, inheriting inheriting classes have access uh, to to the uh, to those properties. Uh, further, you have at the bottom any uh, implementation details and, and methods that have access to the data inside of the class. Uh, we're not worried about these, uh, at least for the first uh, assignment. So there's no need for you to uh, document any of the methods uh, that uh, that that uh, implement any behavior. Uh, so do not include this in the, at least in the first assignment. Right. Later on, with, uh, uh, for your own project, uh, you, uh, it'll be useful for you to document that as well. Okay, so yeah, don't, don't include methods in the first assignment. Uh, now, the attributes, the attributes can, um, um, uh, typically you can, you, can, you can specify, typically they're, they, they're uh, understood to be a single valued attribute by default. Uh, but you can you can also have multiplicity in in, uh, in some of the uh, uh, attributes. Uh, this one is a, uh, a date of birth, for instance, that could could either exist or not, right? So this is an uh, it's an optional uh, date of birth. Uh, or, for instance, if you have multiple phone numbers, uh, perhaps you could have an array of phone numbers uh, listed here. Uh, so so here you can dis you, you can specify the multiplicity of uh, of attributes, but typically they're 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 uh, singular. Right, so username, pass, one username, one password, an optional date of birth. Okay. Uh, typically, if, uh, if you have multiple instances, uh, typically that's, that's captured not by the multiplicity here, but as a multiplicity with an association of another class. Right, so, so perhaps you might have multiple uh, date of births uh, captured in a separate uh, class, and then, and then an association that goes along between the two classes. That's more common. Uh, or you can have uh, multiplicity across uh, across different classes, um, uh, or again within within a particular within, within a particular property, and the property can go from zero to one, meaning it's optional, or zero to, to star, meaning there's, there could be any number of uh, date of births. I don't know, can you have more than one date of birth? I guess not. <laughs> uh, so this this means it's just optional. It could be that um, uh, the user has not entered. The, uh, the data for that date of birth, right? So, so we, don't, we don't know what the value is unless you give it to us. Uh, but nevertheless, you can, you can have other, other um, you know, it's, it, it, this, this is exactly one, it's, this is the, this is the um, it's mandatory, meaning it's, it's not optional. You have, to, you have to tell them it's required um, uh, at least one value, uh, any number of values. So there's, these are the more common ones. Uh, enumeration is a, um, uh, it's, it's, uh, so some features or some concepts in UML uh, are not part of the, uh, of, the, um, of the core concepts of, uh, of, uh, of class diagrams. 
Uh, but UML is it's extensible. It's a, it's a language that can be extended uh, so that if there are some concepts that, uh, the, that the UML uh, doesn't capture, right, you can create your own ideas. Right? For instance, enumerations uh, was not originally captured in the uh, original specification, even though it's a very common concept. Right? Uh, enumeration is a, is, a, is a listing of valid values. It's a domain. Right? It's a range of values that are valid for a particular uh, property. Okay? So, so uh, for instance, uh, there are many domains that already exist that are standard. For instance, the, the integers. When you say that it's something you declare as an integer, you are saying that a value, a, a, um, uh, the, the valid values for a particular variable of type integer are the set of infinite numbers that go, whole numbers that go from minus infinity to plus infinity. Right? But that is a range, yes? It's a pretty big range. Uh, but nevertheless, it's, uh, it's all the valid symbols from minus infinity all the way to zero, and then going all the way to positive infinity. Those are all, that, that is a very en huge enumeration. Okay? Um, you know, same thing as um, uh, dates is also could be considered a, a, an enumeration, right? which is uh, all the valid strings uh, that uh, are the combinations of year, month, and day, right? with dashes in between, perhaps. Right? So it's a very large enumeration, but nevertheless, it's, a, it's, a, it's an enumerated data type, yes? Uh, if, uh, if there are enumerated data types that don't exist, uh, maybe as, for instance, you know, movie genres, right? We, we don't have a data type uh, movie genre. You can create your own. Uh, so this concept is, 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 is very common in, uh, in object orientation, but it wasn't, it wasn't captured as, a, as an idea. Uh, so, so to extend a UML class diagram, uh, we have what are called stereotypes. Stereotypes uh, allows us to create these new concepts, for instance, enumeration, um, and, the, and the way you, you uh, meaning you capture the idea that we're going to list here valid values, uh, and we're going to give it a name, movie genre, which you can then use to declare variables of type movie genre, you know, and say that that, uh, that that variable, the only possible values that that variable could have are listed here. Right? Notice that this is not a class. Right? This is a, uh, typically in a class you have uh, variable type, variable type, variable type. Notice that these are not variables, yes? These are not variables. Uh, they are actual values, only values. Values from which, the, uh, from which a variable of type movie genre could have only these possible values. Make sense? Okay. Uh, uh, and then, and then uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see the challenges of implementing this, uh, this enumerated data type in, uh, in, uh, in relational databases, right? Some databases support uh, enums, and some databases don't support enums, right? Uh, so there's some pretty some standard ways of implementing uh, enumerated data types in uh, in relational databases uh, that um, uh, that uh, are are universally uh, uh, um, implementable in any relational database, regardless of what vendor uh, or or um, or what particular idiosyncrasies you have in that particular database. So we'll come back to that and see how uh, this is mapped to a, a relational database, how it's, how it's implemented. Uh, other ones is uh, specialization and generalization is, uh, again, a very, con very uh, common idea in uh, object-oriented technologies uh, where you uh, declare a, um, a generic a type of, uh, of, of some concept that uh, captures the, the, uh, the properties that are common to uh, certain, other, uh, certain other concepts that might be special cases of the, of the, of the more general concept. Uh, so, so this arrow here, that's this triangle, empty triangle, uh, specifies that uh, the, um, you know, looking from, the, the, uh, looking from, from, from a starting uh, uh, class, uh, you can have different special cases of, that, of those classes. Uh, for instance, you might have a, an employee or generic employee uh, that uh, might, have, uh, might have all the properties of all types of employees. You might have multiple types of employees. You, can, you might have a full-time employee. Uh, you might have an hourly employee. Um, you can have a commission employee. You can have all sorts of employees uh, that, um, that uh, have specific behaviors or specific uh, attributes, right? Uh, but you might want to have capture all the things that are common to all employees. So all employees might have first name, last names. They all have social security number. Uh, they all might have the uh, the date that they were hired, uh, and certain uh, and maybe a department that they belong to, right? And those are might be all the common things about all employees. 
Uh, but then you might have other properties that are specific to different types of employees, right? Maybe you, an hourly employee might have uh, you know, the hours that they work, the rates that they, they charge per hour, and that's only specific to that hourly employee. Whereas a full-time employee might have maybe a yearly salary, yes? Uh, and so, so all the things that are common uh, to all types of employees are captured in the higher level uh, uh, data type. And, uh, and then all the special cases are captured down below. Now this, this concept has different names in different, uh, different contexts uh, typically, but the, the general idea is that you have a, a, a generalization and you have a specialization. You know, it's a, a general case and a, a special cases of them. Uh, and you can create all, all many, many um, hierarchies of generalization and specializations. Not only just two levels, but this could be you know, three, four, five, an indefinite number of levels uh, on, on, on you know, inheritance. Um, so, so in, in, in this case, uh, we have different names for this, these different kinds of things. Uh, we, the, we, we sometimes say that this is a base class, and, and these are all subclasses of, of, of some superclass. Uh, or this is a base class, and these are all derived classes of, of, the, base, of, the, of the subclass, of the um, uh, base class. Or we say that uh, a heading is a, a special type of, of widget. Right? So we say that uh, a heading is a, right? So there's, a, there's an is a relationship between the two. So these are different jargons for the same idea. Uh, so you'll hear it in different, uh, um, named in different ways in, in, different, um, in different literature. Uh, one other thing is uh, uh, abstract. Notice that we are also using a stereotype, uh, abstract at the top, meaning uh, the concept is that uh, some ideas are, are too abstract right, or too generic or too vague right, to be of, of any use right, in, uh, in a real phenomenon, right, to actually be, have a, you know, something that, that, uh, that, that, uh, that is, is too vague to be able to uh, calculate anything. For instance, if, uh, if you tell me that I'm an employee, uh, that might not be enough for me to be able to, for instance, calculate your salary or calculate your paycheck at the end of the week, right? Unless you tell me if you are a full-time employee or you tell me it's an hourly employee, right? So if you don't specify a little more details, right, your, the, 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 the uh, employee is too vague, right, to do any operation on, on, a, on a particular employee. Make sense? So we, might, so we might say that employee is an abstract idea. It's too abstract. You need to be a little more specific. Right, so you need to tell me which type of employee you are. Right, the classical example is, uh, is uh, the, the, you know, talking about a shape, for instance. A shape might be a little bit too vague uh, to be able to draw it on the screen, unless you tell me a particular type of shape, right, a rectangle or a square or a circle uh, that gives me a radius, that gives me a height or a width uh, that can, I can actually draw on the screen, whereas a shape might give me only a position, an x, y position. But if you, don't, you know, if you don't tell me what type of shape, it's too abstract. Uh, so in, in that case, you know, we might we we might enumer we might uh, add a stereotype uh, to that to that class as being abstract or being an inter interface. An interface is also another example of using a stereotype uh, to to um, to specify a particular role of a particular class. Make sense? Uh, okay. Uh, a couple other things. So some, some of these uh, attributes, as I mentioned earlier, are multi-valued. That uh, might have an array or a collection or a set or a hash table that can be implemented. Uh, associations we, we, we talked about last week, right? It's just uh, captured with a, with, with, a, with a line that connects uh, two, uh, two classes. And, uh, and optionally, we uh, annotate these uh, associations, uh, you know, specifying the type of relationship between the two classes. Um, uh, oftentimes, we also use an arrow you know, to, 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 uh, to specify the, the, uh, the direction of the association. Uh, we might say that a book is written by an author or an author writes a book, right? and, and we point you know, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the direction on, on how we should interpret that association. Now, this association, the way we typically implement them uh, is by either having a foreign key right, that goes from, from the uh, weak side uh, to a strong side. Right? Uh, or, usually, or usually some kind of attribute that is added to the, to the class. But it's documented this way. It's documented as an annotation, but actually implemented by uh, having it as a field or a property uh, implemented in, 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 um, in Java or a field in a, in a, in a table. Make sense? Right? Um, uh, uh, other... other um, 
uh, we talked about that. Uh, other things that we annotate as part of the, uh, of the association is how many instances of each one of these are participating in the association. We might say that you know, zero or many of those are happening, uh, are, are, uh, are, are participating. Uh, and if you do have an author, you must, uh, if you, to be an author, you have to have at least one, one book uh, written to be considered to be an author. Uh, so this specifies how many participate in the association. Uh, if the association uh, needs to have you know, uh, uh, more, uh, more specific information about the association, uh, we typically capture the, uh, that uh, as, a, as a distinct uh, separate class that describes the association. For instance, uh, this, this uh, is written by or writes, uh, only captures the, the uh, relationship between a particular book and a particular author. Right? But it doesn't specify any, any, uh, any additional uh, information that we might want to capture about the association. For instance, uh, I might want to capture not only that the book was written by a particular author, but uh, there might be multiple editions of that book, uh, there might be different versions, or there might be uh, a history uh, of, uh, of how I wrote the book, right? And, uh, and if I want to capture that, those, t those types of information, they don't really belong to the book. They don't, that information doesn't belong to the book or doesn't belong to the author. It belongs to the association. Right, the relationship between the two. So I might want to capture maybe the log or the history uh, of this relationship between the author and the book. Uh, so I might have a separate class that might say, you know, when, uh, you know, when I, I made an entry as I was writing the book, right, these are all the logs uh, as I was writing the book. You know, these were the edits that I made at a particular date. So this is, a, this is an edit log that, that keeps track of, of the association itself. Um, and it's captured, uh, documented as just a dotted line uh, from the association. Uh, now, the way you implement this in a, in a relational database typically uh, is that this is just a mapping table. It's a mapping table that has two foreign keys, has a foreign key pointing to the author and, a, uh, and, and, and another foreign key pointing to the book. Right? Uh, but the way you, you captured it in, a, in, a, in UML is with a dotted line. Another way that it's, uh, this is typically documented is, again, with just an association going to the book, an association going to the author. Right? But that's, uh, that's uh, the more modern way to capture it is by using the, the dotted line. Right? Uh, to, again, to, it's, it's, it's more, it's more um, uh, it captured its role, the role of, of, uh, of uh, describing the association, right? as opposed to just being a mapping. Uh, the other uh, concept is uh, that this can describe the, uh, the, the life cycle between, between associated classes uh, where the life cycle of one of the uh, uh, instances might depend on the life cycle of another, meaning that the existence of one depends on the existence of some, uh, some other, uh, some other um, instance. Right? For instance, if you might have, a, uh, um, uh, if you might have a, 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 an order, right, a purchase order, uh, that purchase order typically will have a one-to-many relationship uh, with many products, right? So you might have, if you, if you, if you place an order, typically in the, in the, that order will have references to the products that you're buying, right? Uh, plus the quantities of how, many, of how many of those products you're buying, yes? So, but those are references. We understand them that they are references to the original products, uh, meaning that, that uh, if, I, if I remove the, 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 uh, uh, the, the, uh, the order, I don't, I don't necessarily mean... Uh, to remove also the products that were associated with it, right? Now, it would make no sense that uh, if I remove one, I would remove the others, okay? So, so we say, we call that an aggregation type of association. But the life cycle of one, the, the life cycle, lifespan of one of them does not imply anything about the lifespan of the other, right? So if I remove one, it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to remove the other one, right? The existence of one does not depend on the existence of the other. Make sense? Uh, but in some cases, I might uh, choose uh, to specify that the, that the life cycle of one does depend on the life cycle of the other. Right? So that if I remove, uh, maybe if I remove um, um, uh, a section right, that, uh, that, uh, for, for a course because there was not enough enrollment, uh, then it might imply that that section, it might have many enrollments associated to that one section. It might make no sense to keep track of those enrollments associated to that particular section. If I remove the section, it would make, it would make sense to also remove the enrollments in that, in that particular section. Right? So in that case, I might decide that yes, the lifespan of one of those records, of, the, of some of these records, depends on the lifespan of the other records. Meaning if I remove one, that should cascade to removing all the other ones. 
Make sense? Uh, so in that case, we might want to document that uh, as a composition. We might say that, yes, if I remove one, I remove also the, the other one. Yes? Uh, now, typically, uh, oftentimes, these, uh, these, uh, these, the documentation of the lifespan oftentimes is not captured. Right? It's, uh, it's left uh, as an implementation detail left to the actual implementer. Right? Oftentimes, uh, uh, folks that are documenting and creating UML class diagrams won't bother to say whether it's an aggregation or an association. Right? They'll just say it's associated. Right? So they'll draw a line, they'll draw the multiplicity, but they, don't go, they won't go further and, say, and specify whether it's, it's a, 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 an aggregation or, or a composition. Um, uh, and oftentimes, the implementation is left to the interpretation of you know, maybe a discussion between the uh, business owner uh, and the implementer. Right? Because what, you know, my, one of them might, might un uh, understand it one way, and somebody might understand it else uh, el um, in a different way. For instance, my understanding that if I, if I leave Facebook right, and my record in Facebook, my understanding would be that the record would be removed. Yes? And my, also my understanding would be uh, that all the posts, images uh, that are associated with my account should also be removed. Uh, but that's my interpretation, right? Probably from Facebook's point of view, that would never happen, right? They want to keep all that information, right? And regardless of whether I remove myself or not from the, from the, from the social network. So that's, that's, that's a completely decision on how it's, it's going to be implemented uh, and whatever business uh, rules you might, you might want to impose. Make sense? Uh, so, for instance, in the, uh, in the assignment, I would ask you to, um, uh, again, to choose at least one composition, at least one aggregation, uh, because there's always going to be a, an interpretation of how you, you might interpret the, the, the document. It can only be, uh, it can only be um, fully uh, qualified as a discussion between whoever wrote the document and whoever's going to be I implementing it. All right? I'll leave it up to you. Which one you would be an aggregation? Which we would be an association? At least one association, at least one aggregation. And I'd like for you to describe why you chose one versus another. Okay. Uh, just and, and the intention would be for you to, for for you to convince uh, the the instructors or whoever's grading you that you understand what an association is and what an aggregation is, right? Not whether uh, your choice. Uh, that this would be an aggregation would be correct, or whether a, uh, a composition would be correct. Right? If you can defend it, uh, then, then that, that's fine. Again, that it, would be a, it would be a business decision uh, to decide to whether you'd remove one or another. Okay? All right. 